Hello everyone, welcome back to my Code to Care uh, video series. I'm doing a part two on open source uh, versus proprietary models, so go ahead and watch part one if, uh, if you haven't yet. But in this um, one, I wanted to show you how open source models compare to proprietary models. And there's really two ways to think about it. The first is how they rank um, in terms of uh, accuracy or user satisfaction or that uh, that kind of thing. And what I'm going to do in a moment is go to my computer and show you a leaderboard. Uh, and this particular leaderboard is created by people typing in a question, like a chat question, getting two answers from two randomly chosen models, of which the user doesn't know what the models are, and then picking whether they think A is better than B, B is better than A, that they're tied, or they're both bad. Uh, and basically uses that data to rank these uh, models, and it's uh, uh, one of the leading uh, leaderboards. And you're going to see that proprietary models rank higher than open source. Not that much higher. Open source models are uh, in pretty good shape, uh, I, I would say. But maybe as you would expect, uh, the proprietary models, the ones people are trying to build companies on with revenue streams and that kind of thing by the models directly sort of are, are the best uh, right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my computer and I'll show you what one of these leaderboards looks like so you can get a feel for how proprietary compares to open source. Okay, let me show you what a leaderboard uh, looks like. So the one I like the most is Chatbot Arena. Uh, it's the one I was just describing the way it works. You go there. Um, uh, here's the leaderboard tab. Uh, and you can see them down here. So they have all the models ranked, or not all the models, but all the all the the well-performing models rank uh, and then you can see where they come from and then the license so um, the word proprietary um, means it's a closed source model uh, and then um, you start to see other licenses so nothing is like purely open 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 source like no license whatsoever um, but some of these licenses are open enough for your use Okay, so you can see that all the top models are proprietary. Uh, and then when you get to number nine, then you start to see an, a, a more open uh, license, Llama 3.1. Uh, this is a model. It's NVIDIA uh, basing it on uh, one of Meta's models. So you can see uh, Meta, you can see NVIDIA, you can see An uh, well, Anthropic is that one's proprietary. Uh, but you can see different license types um, down here, uh, Meta, Mistral, um, there's some Anthropic ones down here, uh, there's some open, more open source Google ones. These, these licenses where it says MIT and where it says Apache 2.0, let me find one of those. Those are the, here's one, those are the most um, open uh, licenses. Um, so, uh, but at any rate, the open source is not too far behind. By the time you get to 9, 10, 11, 18, 22, then you're getting into more open source uh, models. By 36, you have a wide open uh, model with this uh, Gemma 9B um, uh, one. So, um, so that's basically how they, how they rank, is that the proprietor on top, Open source, not too far behind. Uh, you definitely need to read the license terms because it might not be open enough. Some have a um, restriction where you can use it up until, I don't know, 500 million users per month, and then you have to pay um, pay the creator of model or things, things like that. Uh, but generally speaking, um, proprietary are the ones hosted in the cloud. You can't really see in them. You can't. Uh, muck with them, um, that kind of thing. And then the other uh, licenses, that's when you can start downloading them, putting in your on-prem uh, environment, using them more freely, not having to pay uh, the company money, those those kinds of creating derivative works, fine-tuning it, training it yourself, that kind of, uh, that kind of thing. All right, um, so that's what they look like on that uh, leaderboard. So this is one way to think about the difference and how they rank together. But another way to think about it is uh, the concept of time. 
that open source models are just behind in time to proprietary models. So if you would imagine a uh, timeline, and um, on this date, a proprietary model comes out. So here's a proprietary model, and you start developing on this model. You like its performance. You're building some good uh, use case and some software, that, that kind of thing. What you can expect later is that um, there'll be an open source model that gives you that same performance. So if you imagine that leaderboard, some of those open source models are better than proprietary models that were released a year ago or two years ago or that kind of thing. And so what you can expect is this kind of performance that you're building a use case on, you'll be able to use an open source model um, you know, a year in the future or something like that that'll have just as good performance and might have some of the other positive benefits that you uh, that you want. So open source models are um, just behind proprietary models in time. Um, but sometimes software takes a while to build, a while to get adopted by your users. And so you may think of each project as starting with a proprietary model, really getting it solid uh, in that manner. Uh, and then over time, a version two, version three, you replace it with an equally performing open source model to your original model. So uh, so I think I think there'll always be this relationship where open source models are just behind in time, but not so far behind. I think that uh, you would want to consider open source as part of your AI uh, strategy because these models will be um, acceptable for your use cases uh, and just kind of in a different time horizon than the proprietary models that you're currently uh, working with. So that's it. I hope that was interesting, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.